Well, where do I start? Maybe a couple years from now. Before it happened. We never really got along, my brother and I. As any kingship, we had our ups and downs, fights and agreements. But we always had an unspoken bond. He always told me how he loved Rio. This Italian drink made here in Canada. Never gave up the chance to have one. Not once. He usually bring it with him on his afternoon runs. Says it gives him a boost adrenaline, whatever that means. It's pop, so wouldn't it make you feel nauseous? Dad's usually out of town, shooting his films, so we get the house to ourselves quite often. My brother's always wearing his operator's hat whenever he's away. Keeps part of him here at home. I just wear a blue jeans hat. No particular reason, it's just comfortable. We had a cat named Tiny, who passed a couple years before the incident. My brother never really got over her. He never really talked about her either. Always kept it to himself. I think it's when he went for those runs, to relieve the pain. I don't know. I brought him a burrito right before the usual time he goes out to run. I thought it would cheer him up. It didn't. After Tiny died, he stopped talking to me. He just left whenever I tried to engage in conversation with him. You know, this was the longest conversation we had before it happened. We talked about the birds soaring around the trees, the snakes hiding amongst the leaves, the spiders winding their webs, all ready to strike at their next victim. He never ended up drinking his brio. He only opened it. He finally got up. He left mid-conversation and exited the gate. I expected he went out to go run, which usually takes quite a while to finish. I got up as well, and I left the moment. I headed for the door, and I went inside the house. It became emotionally warmer as the conversation grew. I hadn't noticed, but I didn't eat the jacket he gave me. Footsteps, then three light knocks. I came to the door and unexpectedly met him with the unopened bottle of Brio in his hand. He passed it to me, and I looked upon the back of his head as he left. There were so many unexplainable motions, too many to say in just ten seconds. As he walked away, even though he didn't notice, I waved for the last time. Six years have passed, and I haven't stopped thinking about him since then. I always imagine him running through the beautiful scenery. The trees. People. Cars. Sydney ambience. Just being himself. Coming home after he's had his fill. After he rids the pain away and knowing that he has me, his brother, by his side. I keep hoping he'll run up to the door and he'll be home again. I can't accept it. But I know that I'm never seeing my brother again.